Jim Witcher wants to control the time of his death, but can't because of the law and his family's religious beliefs. Kitty Rail has control, but doesn't know when she'll use it. More often than not, it's the doctor and loved ones who must decide for the dying. It's never easy. Some hard choices now confront Dr. Carlos Gomez at the University Hospital in Charlottesville, Virginia. One of his patients is terminally ill, and the standard amounts of medication are not easing his suffering. Ricky, are you hurting this morning? Um, a little. Do you remember who I am? Ricky Tackett is dying of liver failure. He's only 44 years old. You know, yesterday he acted so calm and not at all what I was seeing at home, but it come out last night. That's okay. what I had been dealing with. The and delirium from the agitation. Yeah, I mean, just, you could not get into Ricky's the wife, Rose, has been caring for him at home with some help from visiting hospice nurses. But he's become too agitated for her to handle. We went back up on the Dilaudid overnight. And I went back up on it again this morning. I mm -hmm. called Karen at 7. She's back up to He's 34. Right. He got real combative just a minute ago. Okay. Ricky, can you wake up enough and talk to me for a second? Are you hurting in your belly right now? Dr. Gomez is trying to determine the exact okay. amount of pain medication to keep Ricky comfortable. Does that hurt? But he has another consideration. He's also trying to keep Ricky conscious enough to communicate with his wife. He's yep. gotten two good doses of um, his Dilaudid, too. It's not working. We've got a decision to make in terms of his level of consciousness. Part of the delirium is the medicines that we're giving him, I'm afraid. I think when we back down, he starts to get agitated. I don't want him to have that kind of agitation. Wait a minute, Ricky. OK, it's all right. And, um, it's all right. It seems to work for a little while, so I'm just going to double the medicine right now. So he got Denivan just when? Just now. I just okay, gave so it to him. Just one milligram? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and give two. Okay. Okay. Ricky, I'm going to come back a little bit later on and talk with you, okay? Sure. Okay? Sure. You said in there... We have a decision to make. Mm -hmm. What's the decision? The decision is there's a fine line between trying to keep him awake enough to be conversant and controlling his pain. And we usually are very good about that, but he's encephalopathic at this point. He's literally out of his mind. He's delirious. And part of his agitation and part of his suffering is the delirium. It's not just for him, but for his wife. And so you know, I, we tried to back down on his pain medicine yesterday, thinking that he was too somnolent. He woke up a bit. I was actually able to talk to him. He recognized me. Uh, I got a call during the night, but he was in pain. We started backing up on his, uh, going up on his medicine again. And then this morning I called again, and he was still in pain, so we went up on his medicine again. We come in there now, and I can't elicit pain. I, mean, I, <clears throat> I palpated over the site, and he's not tender there. But he's clearly delirious, and he doesn't recognize me this morning. So what do you do at that point? I mean, wouldn't the humane thing to do to be really relieve the pain, just let him sink into unconsciousness. Yes. Yes. Can you make that decision, or does his wife have to make it? I think we make it in common. Is this worse than you thought it would be? I just step back and let them do it, and mm -hmm. it's hard. You know, you can be a part of this any way you want. You know, know. there's days you could be more involved, and then other days you can step away, and we would understand. But I also want her to be engaged in the decisions, and I think we're reaching the point where the best that I can do for him is to sedate him um, and let him die. Uh, I would prefer that he be alert and talking all the way up to infinity, but I can't do that. What's the difference between this decision to sedate him and let him die? and what out there is called physician-assisted suicide? That's a great question. And, um, there are several differences. Differences. One is an intent. I don't, I don't want this fellow to die, and I'm not trying to will his death, and I'm not actively trying to bring it about. Um, but I'm also not willing to let him sit there and suffer. And is there, is there a hypocrisy here? Um, there may or may not be. Am I creating a myth that makes me feel better about what I'm doing? That may be true. But there's a line that I'm very firm about, and Rose knows it, 
his wife knows it and Ricky knows it, uh, which is that I'm not going to do something to bring about his death as a result of my actions, directly as a result of my actions. Oh, did we change, oh, we must have changed the dilated orders last Am I willing to do things that may hasten his death? Sure. I'm not willing to give him fluids at this point. I'm not willing to put a feeding tube in him, for example. I'm not willing to treat an infection at this point. Uh, are all those exercises in assisted suicide? I don't think so. I mean, that's a language that I'm not comfortable with. I think you know, one of the first principles of medicine is you, you do no harm. Um, and if you can't act so as to make the patient's life better, you step back and do something different. There's nothing medically that I think I can do at this point to make his life better, but I damn well can't control his pain and his delirium. You can make his dying better. I can make his dying better, absolutely. Not just for him, but for the family. I just wanted to talk about what's going on with Ricky right now. Before Dr. Gomez decides exactly what to do, he will try to understand clearly Rose's wishes and those of her dying husband. The thing that I think is painful for all of us to watch is when he gets out of his head like that, his delirium. Um, you kept saying he's not Ricky, and you're right, he's not Ricky. Um, the only way that I know how to control that right now is to sedate him. Um, because when we try to lighten up on his medicine, he gets completely out of control. What it's going to mean, though, is that Ricky's probably going to be unconscious until he dies, or at least in and out of consciousness. He may respond by squeezing a hand. Um, he may intermittently look at you, but he's not going to be thrashing about the way he has been. When he's violent and, oh, he's not Ricky. And he can't control that for whatever reasons. And he's not been himself in a while. Occasionally, a few words, but then he's back to not being himself. And he wouldn't want to be that way. We discussed this when he was very clear-headed. He wouldn't want this. When he went back to Kentucky this last time, he'd been pretty clear with me that he wanted to have some time at home, walk through his church, say goodbye to his congregation, and so on. Was he able to, to do that? We had about four beautiful days at home. He went to church. We stayed through the meeting. He didn't participate, but he was there. Whatever made him feel he had to do that, he got to do it. And sedation is welcomed, I think. He would want that. Yeah, I, um, I agree. I just it's, a, it's always a tough call, because the hope is always that you're going to be able to have some more quality time with somebody. And there comes a point where it sounds like whatever Ricky felt like he needed to do, he did. And it sounds like whatever you needed to do with Ricky, you've done also. Did you talk to him about dying? Did you two to dis discuss it together? Openly? Yeah. Yes. Honestly? Yes. I think uh, the two weeks we were here before, he had the opportunity to have a very good conversation with all of his family, people in the church, of what he wanted. And I think they had that opportunity, and I hope that they would be satisfied with that time they got while he was a clear mind. And he poured his heart out to everyone, including Dr. Gomez. He suffered enough, and he's tired, and he wants to go home. He's prepared. Yes, but his body won't let him, or something won't let him, you know? I don't know. He was a minister. Mm -hmm. He is a minister. Yes. So faith is clearly... He has a better place to go in our beliefs, and that's Does why... Does that make it easier? Yeah. That is the only thing that makes it better for me. And, you know, he's tired. He has a right to say, I don't want no more. And I, I think we should uh, grant him that. You know, he's tried for us, and I think we should give it up for him.